Hi friends, today we're gonna to learn about our next tool in our toolbox to help us navigate our relationships. And that tool is the apology and forgiveness tool. And it's an important tool um, because it's all about making our relationships with other people um, really um, important and um, positive and really wholesome. Like. Um, Whenever we, we make mistakes all the time and we say things sometimes when we're upset and things that we don't really mean. And it's really important to use our apology and forgiveness tool when we make those mistakes because we still care about those people around us and we want them to know that. And so this tool is kind of the key for that. It's for keeping our relationships um, really good quality, like really feeling good about each other and getting to still have fun with each other even when we make mistakes. So today for our toolbox, um, I, I'm going to start you off with a little quote, which actually is from Harry Potter. People find it easier to forgive others for being wrong than for being right. And that kind of means that um, we have this need where we feel like we need to be right. And sometimes it can be difficult to apologize and say that maybe we weren't right and it's okay if we're not right. Sometimes we think we're right and that's okay. And But then you realize, oh, that it wasn't right for that person or it was wrong in this situation. And we need to find a way to apologize so that that other person can forgive us for our mistake. So uh, when we give an apology, it restores trust between people. But it has to be a sincere apology in order to resolve your problems. And it may, that means that you have to really self-reflect and you have to have strong emotional strength and know that just because you made this mistake, it's okay and you can come back from it. Um, so we have two things we're going to focus on, right? We're going to focus on how to apologize and how to forgive. Those are very different things, and they're both part of this tool. Um, forgiveness takes a willingness to let go of something. You know, when someone um, hurts you um, and makes you feel bad, it's, sometimes it's really hard to let go of something that something else, someone else has done to us. We want to let go of that blame, that resentment. We want to be able to move forward. That's what forgiveness is about. So our thing today is um, I admit mistakes and work to forgive yours. That's our mantra for this tool. So let's say it with me. I admit my mistakes and work to forgive yours. So admit means I'm saying that they're true. I'm telling everyone, yes, I did make that mistake. Right? You're not trying to lie and be like, no, I was still right. Uh, you know, you're being truthful. You're saying, yeah, you know what? I messed up. And that takes a big person to do that, to tell other people they messed up. So that's the apology. I am admit admitting my mistake and then work to forgive yours. So that means you're working to forgive other people's mistakes. Sometimes that can be hard too. All right. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, which I kind of touched on briefly, is that we have to use all our other tools to make this one work. So in order to give an apology that's sincere, you definitely have to calm down. We have to use our breathing tool. And that's what I have on here. It says, right, breathe in and breathe out with those belly breaths or take your measuring tape out. Okay. If you can't calm down and self-reflect, um, then you won't be able to apologize or forgive. We definitely need to use our listening tool in order to understand and ask open-ended questions and really understand where that other person is coming from. That's kind of our empathy tool as well, right? Take ownership and really understand your part and their part of the incident and understand how they could have made that mistake and, and really see it from their point of view as well. It takes the courage tool to use all of these, right? We haven't talked about our courage tool yet, but courage means to be brave and do hard things. And then of course our patience tool, right? Similar to our breathing tool where we don't wanna just rush ahead and blame people. We wanna calm down and think about it. We wanna take our time. So maybe you need to walk away for a little bit in order to calm down, then come back and you might be ready to apologize or forgive. And that's what these two people in our book today, Matthew and Tilly, they take a moment um, and they take their time and then they come back together. You'll see that in our story. And they want to find that common good because they want to come back and be friends again. So this is a tool um, and it, the, the image for it is our glue. And it says we can make things right and I can fix my mistakes. Apologize, forgive. So the glue is like if I broke something, right? I got something, I broke it. It's in pieces. How am I going to fix it? 
and fix it with glue, right? So the whole idea of the apology and forgiveness tool is that when you break a relationship or a broken friendship, you can glue it back together with apologizing and forgiveness, okay? So um, that's why we chose the glue for our icon for this tool. All right, I think we're ready to read our story. And after our story, we're gonna talk about some examples of ways to apologize and ways to forgive. So see if you notice any of that in this story. This story is called Matthew and Tilly by Rebecca C. Jones and illustrated by Beth Peck. Matthew and Tilly were friends. They rode bikes together and they played hide and seek together. Look, she's hiding. <laughs> they sold lemonade together. And when business was slow, they played sidewalk games together. together. Lemonade stand. They got their chuck on the ground. Playing hopscotch, huh? And sometimes they ate ice cream cones together. Mmm. Once they even rescued a lady's kitten from a tree together. The lady gave them money for the bubble gum machines. So later they chewed gum together and remembered how brave they had been. Sometimes though, Matthew and Tilly got sick of each other. One day when they were coloring, Matthew broke Tilly's purple crayon. He didn't mean to, but he did break it. You broke my crayon, Tilly said in her crabbiest voice. It was an old crayon, Matthew said in his grouchiest voice. It was ready to break. Mm, maybe I should use crabbier and grouchier voices. I'm going to go back. You broke my crayon, Tilly said in her crabbiest voice. It was an old crayon, Matthew said in his grouchiest voice. It was ready to break. No, it wasn't, Tilly said. It was a brand new crayon and you broke it. You always break everything. Stop being so picky, Matthew said. You're always so picky and stinky and mean. Well, you're so stupid, Tilly said. You're so stupid and stinky and mean. Ooh, they definitely said some mean things to each other there, didn't he? Matthew stomped up the stairs by himself. Tilly found a piece of chalk and began drawing numbers and squares on the sidewalk by herself. Upstairs, Matthew got out his cash register and some cans so he could play store. He piled the cans extra high and he put prices on everything. This was the best store he had ever made, probably because that picky and stinky and meat old Tilly wasn't around to mess it up but he didn't have a customer. And playing store wasn't much fun without a customer. Tilly finished drawing the numbers and squares. She drew them really big with lots of squiggly lines. This was the best sidewalk game she had ever drawn. Probably because that stupid and stinky and mean old Matthew wasn't around to mess it up. But she didn't have anyone to play with. And a sidewalk game just wasn't much fun without another player. Matthew looked out the window and wondered what Tilly was doing. Tilly looked up at Matthew's window and wondered what he was doing. She smiled just a little. That was enough for Matthew. I'm sorry, he called. So am I, said Tilly. And Matthew ran downstairs so they could play. together again. Does that remind you of some little arguments you've had maybe with your siblings or with a friend in the past? Definitely reminds me of times that I've gotten into little arguments and gotten heated. And you can see they, that when they got upset, they walked away from each other. They thought about, hmm, what's really important? So they came back together. So the last thing I want to do, friends, is we are going um, to talk about some examples of how to apologize and how to forgive. So think about a way that you've apologized when you've done something a little bit wrong. What's one way that you've apologized? 
Yeah. All right. I'm going to do apology in orange and forgive in purple. So apologize. I heard them say um, a special word that you've probably used a lot when you apologize in the story. It said, I'm sorry. And now what's even better is when you explain why you're sorry. So the other person really knows that you mean it. I'm sorry I called you bad names. I'm sorry I took your broke your crayon. I'm sorry I, right? And tell them exactly why you're sorry so they know exactly like that you're on the same page, right? Another thing you could say is please forgive me for, and again, tell them why. Please forgive me for breaking your crayon. I didn't mean to. And this is my favorite, is where you really tell the person that you really didn't mean to because you're not going to do it again. Now, you can't necessarily promise something in the future. You don't know for sure that you won't accidentally break another crayon, but you can promise to do your best. I will try not to do that again. Okay, so really making them a, a promise for the future that you're going to try your best. Okay. The other thing is you can do a forgiveness. So when someone apologizes, it's your duty to try to forgive them, right? On our tool, we said, I admit my mistakes and work to forgive yours. So how do we forgive? How do we do that? When we're really upset, what can we say to let them know that we've forgiven them? You could say, it's okay. You could say, thanks for saying that. It means a lot to me. So that's a really good um, way of accepting an apology, really knowing that that person knows it was hard to apologize and you really value them for, what, for their words. You can say, I've done that too before. I know I've definitely broken other people's crayons before. And so you try not to. I've done that before too. So you're like, that's cool, I understand. Sometimes when it's a small thing, that could be a good forgiveness. And this last one is just a really genuine thank you. And then let's go play. That's kind of what Matthew and Tilly did, right? They both apologized for things they said. And then they're like, oh, we just want to play with each other. We're friends. Let's go. All right. So that's our apology and forgiveness tool. I hope that you guys think about some things that um, sometimes that you... Um, needed to apologize for something that maybe you didn't do um, your best, right? You made a mistake. And think about how to forgive people too. Thanks for joining me today for our toolbox lesson, friends.